You might already remember that my main and primary wireless router is ASUS RT-AC68Q because I talked about it a lot on this channel. But I also have a T-Mobile AC1900 cell spot router, uh, which basically is the same router with a different firmware. So uh, you might also remember that a while ago I installed ASUS WRT firmware on it and uh, turned it into another uh, one of these because I actually want to test out the uh, ASUS AI mesh system. But just recently, I've gone one step further and installed the DDWRT firmware on this guy, which is a third party firmware and is loaded with features. In one of my first DDWRT videos, I actually installed it on my old Linksys E900 wireless router and set up a repeater bridge to uh, extend the range of my wireless network. I would suggest to watch that video first if you haven't already because in this video I'm also going to set up a repeater bridge but instead of using my very old Linksys E900 wireless router I'm actually going to use my uh, less old Asus wireless router. Now you might be wondering why on earth I'm actually doing the same project again. Am I crazy? I mean I might be a little bit but not necessarily for doing this project again because this time this router is actually dual band versus that time uh, that router was single band. It actually used the same 2.4 gigahertz radio to connect to the primary router and also to rebroadcast the wireless network which honestly is not really good. But now this router is actually dual band and has more options available as a repeater bridge. Ah. Okay, first of all, let's quickly have a look at our network diagram here. The primary router is dual band and is broadcasting a 2.4 GHz wireless network as well as a 5 GHz wireless network. What we're gonna do is to use the secondary router which is also dual band to extend the range of our wireless networks. But how can we do that? We're gonna actually have the secondary router connect wirelessly to the primary wireless router using either the 2.4 GHz band or the 5 GHz band to form a wireless bridge. But which of these bands should we choose is something that we're gonna talk about later. So at this point, this wireless bridge, which is also called a client bridge, can provide network and internet connection for the LAN interfaces, basically only for the wired devices connected to the secondary router. This setup actually might work for some people, so they can stop here. But others who actually want to extend the range of Wi-Fi as well, can have the secondary router broadcast a 2.4 GHz network or a 5 GHz network or even both of them to make sure wireless devices further away can connect to the network. And that's actually what we're gonna do today. Something worth noting though is that my primary and secondary router happen to have the same IP address right now but unfortunately it cannot stay like that when they're connected to each other because there's gonna be an IP conflict. So I should change the secondary router's IP address to something else. Any IP address as long as it is unused and is on the same network as the primary router should work fine. Okay so let's begin. The router has a fresh DDWRT firmware with factory default settings. I'm gonna connect my computer directly to one of the LAN ports, open a browser and go to its default IP address which is 192.168.1.1. As always, the first thing I need to do when I log into a fresh DDWRT router is to create a username and a password. Now I can go to the wireless tab basic settings. This is where I can configure the DDWRT router to connect to the primary router and also configure it to broadcast new wireless networks as well. Now because it is dual band, I can actually see two physical wireless interfaces, one 2.4 GHz interface and one 5 GHz interface. By default they are both in the AP mode, which means they are broadcasting two wireless networks and both of them are named DDWRT. There is an option to add virtual interfaces for each physical interface. This actually allows me to create more wireless networks for each frequency band. Now I would change the wireless mode from AP to repeater bridge for whichever frequency band that I want to use for the inter-router connection. 
I decided to use the 2.4 GHz band for that purpose because I actually rarely use this band for the client connections. So I want to dedicate my whole 2.4 GHz band for the connection between my routers and use the 5 GHz band for the clients. As soon as I change the mode, I'm gonna save the page. I'm not gonna click apply settings yet. So as a repeater bridge interface, it is no longer broadcasting an SSID. This is actually going to be like a wireless client that is trying to connect to a wireless router. So the wireless settings here should match the primary router's 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi so it can connect to the primary router. In my case, the wireless network mode is 802.11n, the wireless network name or SSID is room124, which by the way is case sensitive, and I don't need to change anything else here. I'm gonna save the page again and go to the wireless security tab to enter the security settings for the room124 SSID. Which in my case, the security mode is WPA2 pre-shared key, WPA algorithm is AES and WPA shared key which is the Wi-Fi password is Now I'm gonna save the page and go back to the basic settings. As far as the 2.4 GHz band, I have configured it to connect to the primary router. And as I said before, it is no longer broadcasting any 2.4 GHz wireless network. But that doesn't mean it can't, because it actually can. I can add a virtual interface for the 2.4 GHz band and create a new SSID. Save the page and go to the wireless security tab, give it a proper and secure password and have the secondary router broadcast a new 2.4 GHz network. It is actually up to you if you want to do that, but as I said earlier, I only want to use the 2.4 GHz network for the inter-router connection and I'm sure I never want to use it to connect any clients in room 2. It is actually already being broadcast in room 1 and even if I want to use it for the clients, that should be enough for me. So that was the 2.4 GHz interface. The 5 GHz interface though is still in the AP mode which means it is actually being broadcast right now and I guess that is exactly what I want. But I just need to modify these settings to create my 5 GHz wireless network. In my case, I will change the wireless network mode to ACN Mixed. I will name the wireless network room 25 and I will let it choose a channel automatically. There is actually something interesting here. As you can see, if I want, I can choose the DFS channels as well. But if you remember when I explained the DFS channels, I said that the ASUS doesn't let you choose any of those DFS channels. But apparently when you install DDWRT, you will be able to use the DFS channels. But you should always make sure you choose the channels that are allowed in your country because each country has its own rules. If what I just said about the DFS channels didn't make any sense to you, then I would definitely suggest to check out the video where I talk about the DFS channels and one of my weird wireless problems. For the channel width, I would go with 80 MHz because luckily there aren't many 5 GHz wireless networks where I live. But if I was in a congested area, I would choose 20 or 40 MHz to avoid any interference with other 5 GHz wireless networks. I will leave the rest of the options as is, save the page and go to the wireless security tab and give it a proper and secure wireless password. So at this point I'm pretty much done with my wireless configuration and the next thing I will need to do is to go to the security tab to disable the SPI firewall. The DDWRT repeater bridge page has suggested that I should uncheck every box and leave the filter multicast checked. However, it looks like I can no longer do that. I'm not sure if it is something with the newer DDWRT firmware, but I'm just gonna disable the SPI firewall with everything unchecked. Next, I'll go to the services tab and I will disable the DNS mask. Now I'm gonna go to the setup and basic setup page. As you can see, the WAN connection is disabled because as a repeater bridge, it no longer needs a WAN connection. Here, I can also change the router's IP address to make sure it has an unused IP address which is on the same network as the primary router. 
For example, I'm gonna give it 192.168.1.2. Mask is 255, 255, 255, 0. Gateway and local DNS are gonna be the same as the primary router's IP address, which in my case is 192.168.1.1. So because the WAN connection is disabled, if I want I can assign it to switch, so this way I can use the WAN port as a LAN port to connect another wired device to the network. Now I'm gonna save the page and go to the advanced routing tab to make a final change. Which is basically changing the mode from gateway to router. One last save and now I can finally click the apply settings which is gonna push the configuration to the router. I'm gonna wait for a couple of minutes for the router to reboot and in the meantime I'm gonna run a continuous ping to 8.8.8.8 to test the internet connection when my computer is directly connected to one of the LAN ports of the secondary router. I can also do the same test when my computer is connected to the secondary router's Wi-Fi. Okay, that was pretty much it, but just a couple of points before we end this video. I personally usually try to avoid using the same frequency band, I mean the same radio uh, to connect the secondary router to the primary router and also to rebroadcast the wireless network because using the same radio for those tasks is actually going to affect and reduce the performance of the Wi-Fi on the repeater for that frequency band of course but that doesn't mean I would never do that uh, because sometimes uh, for example maybe I don't need a very fast connection on the repeater side and as long as it can extend the range of my Wi-Fi I'm gonna be happy or let's say maybe the 2.4 GHz band is so congested in my area that even if I use only the 5 GHz radio to connect the secondary router to the primary router and also to rebroadcast the Wi-Fi, I might still get better results compared to what I have implemented in this video. I think what I'm trying to say is that uh, maybe a little bit of testing can help me to better determine which kind of scenario works best for me? I mean, based on my environment, uh, maybe the channel utilization in my area, and many other factors. For example, I can use uh, iPerf or JPerf to run a few speed tests all across my network to better determine uh, what frequency I should use or maybe what channel I should use in order to get the best results. But for now, this setup seems to be very stable and working fine for me. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked this video. Hit that like button if you did. Share it if you think others might like it too. And subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. Thank you very much and I will see you next time.